Welcome back to the Llama Stack tutorial where we've been learning all about building generative AI applications using Meta's open source Llama Stack project. And it's been amazing because it simplifies a lot of building blocks of AI applications into a collection of various REST endpoints for inference, RAG, safety, and today we're going to be building agentic capabilities. I absolutely love agents because this is how your LLM can actually interact with the tools we as humans use daily. Think about email or weather or searching the internet, calling an API, you name it. There's also some great guides out there on how to build agents, such as Anthropic's blog post. But an agent is comprised of the model, such as Llama, instructions to define behavior, tools, which are the capabilities to interact with external systems, and safety shields for guardrails. Now, let me show you how this all looks here on my machine. So the whole idea behind Llama Stack is that it's modular and it's easy to move from local to production because you've got this consistent API. So let's say, for example, I need agent capabilities. So for my application, maybe it's written in Python or, or I could even use the CLI, I would make a post request to the Llama Stack server that's running and it gives me the ability to use various providers such as built-in tools for knowledge retrieval or web search or MCP tools that I can plug in and then pass that into the inference provider to get that response back to our actual application. Let's go ahead and give this a try. We're here at the repository on GitHub and I've already gone ahead and cloned this repository locally with the git clone and this URL. But if you'd like to get started and you haven't watched the previous episodes, feel free to use this one line installer. It's going to detect your container engine like Podman or Docker and run Llama Stack as a container for you. Now today, instead of going to the documentations, let's go straight to my code editor and get started with the tutorial on building agents. So we've got the repository cloned here locally. If I go to the docs folder and the zero to hero guide, there's a collection here of notebooks to teach you about inference, about prompt engineering, chatting with images, calling tools, memory safety, and much more. But today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Agentic API 101. Because with Llama Stack and with building AI agents in general, you can use the React framework in order to break a task down from the user and perform multi-step reasoning. So if the user is asking to pull in data from a CRM, right, and perform an analysis, that will then be broken up by our agent into different subtasks. And there's a lot of good articles out there on how to do this, but let's actually see how it works in code. Now, the first step is to uh, have a model running locally. So we're going to be using Olama and the Llama 3.2 model, a 3 billion parameter model, so it's quite easy to run on our local machine. And if you don't already have a model running, you can use a local provider such as Olama or Ramalama in order to interact with a model that's running completely local on your machine. So if I say, hey, we get a response back just like that and nothing leaves our system. Now, the other dependency in order to use Llama Stack is to either run it locally and compile the binary and run that, or you can run it in a container. So the first thing I'm gonna do is export a vi variable for the Llama Stack port. And then I'm going to run this command, which is my own pre-built distribution of Llama Stack running for a Mac machine. But there is a quick start on the website in order to run the right Llama Stack for your machine and customize the distribution. So for example, if you want to use Milvis over Chroma DV, you can customize all of that with the Llama Stack Providers configuration file. Now, I know that's a lot of information, but all you need to know is that it's running here on localhost port 8321. And actually, let's go to the browser so I can show you the API before we start with the tutorial. So if I go to my browser here and I paste in localhost on the port that Llama Stack runs on 8321, and I go to the docs page, I can actually see a full Swagger interface of all of the different APIs that are exposed by Llama Stack that we can interact with. And it's definitely a lot, but let's check out the agents uh, API here. We can create a new agent uh, with these fields, or we can list the current agent. So let's just try that out real quick. Uh, and here you can see, hey, we've already got an MCP registered, or we could use the built-in uh, RAG and knowledge search uh, agent here as well in order to pull information dynamically when it's needed. Um, and so this is just a quick way uh, to get more information about what Llama Stack provides. But let's head back to the code editor. So from our application, or in this example, the Jupyter Notebook, first off, we're going to connect to the Llama Stack server. So on localhost, that port that we just use, and we're providing the model that we want to use, which is that Llama 3.2. 
The next step is actually loading in a specific environment variable that we're going to be using in order to search for results on the internet. So this is called Tavily, but what I've gone ahead and done is actually put this API key here in my .env. So if you go to their website register, you can uh, set that up there in that file and then import that. So the next step here is to work with the Lamastack client, which is going to help us to set up an agent here, log events, do shields, and much, much more. But the first step is to, first off, initialize a client. So the client is going to be Lamastack provided with a API key for this specific agent, so the Tavli search. And we're going to set that agent up. So as I mentioned before, we need not only the client, but the model, the instructions that the agent is going to do, and different parameters and the tool that it'll actually use in order to retrieve that information. So what we're also going to do here is create a session so that we have a search history and context from our previous questions that we've asked the model. So it's not just ephemeral every time we ask a new question. Now the prompt we're going to use is, hey, I'm planning a trip to Switzerland. Where should we visit? And what's so special about the first result that it provides, right? We're going to prompt that to the LLM as a user with the context of that specific prompt. And then we're just going to log it here to the um, results on the Jupyter Notebook. And just like that, we can see that we inferenced uh, and the LLM was able to determine, hey, I need to search the top three places to visit in Switzerland. And notice that it actually parsed that through the user's prompt, right? So it was able to extract that specific information to search using Brave Search or the Tavoli API key. So the top three places that go in Switzerland, it pulled back a result from Quora, uh, which provides a lot of information if we scroll down here um, about recommendations for Switzerland. And it uses that to augment the prompt and provide this result back to us, which is, hey, based on the search results, here are the top three places. So I think that's super, super cool. We can also include the source where it got that information, but that's a quick and easy way to, in a few lines of code here, set up an agent, allow it to have search functionality to be able to pull that information in, keep context, and be able to go back and forth with this model and then take this code and eventually build it into an application that we can run. So a quick and easy example. But the next step here is, hey, I want to go beyond these built-in tools and pull in different agent capabilities using model context protocol. So instead of having to write the tool call for the specific API I wanna use, I can just use a prepackaged version that could run perhaps in a container, perhaps on my local machine, or even remotely and connect to it using an authentication token. So let's see how to do that. So just as an example, if you go to model context protocol on GitHub and check out the server's repository, there are so many different types of official and community sourced MCP servers for every type of use case, right? You could think of, hey, I want to you know, spawn a Postgres database or a Redis database, or I want to integrate with my CRM, or I want to work with Stripe and their API, right? All of these connections for your LLM to their API exist out there. Now, the demo that we're gonna be checking out today is a little bit more simple, but still uses a model context protocol server. Let's check it out here in our code editor. It's quite common to run the binary of an MCP server locally, and of course, connect to it locally because it's all secure. But I like to go one step further and actually run a container that includes my MCP server. So this one was written in Python and it's a simple API in order to check the weather for a certain location. And if I go to a new terminal window, I can actually check and make sure that, hey, this port 3001 is streaming events and messages from that container that's running, which includes my MCP server that'll make requests to a weather API. Now for Lamastack to actually interact with this specific MCP server, we have to register it in what's known as a tool group. So I'll come back up here to the top terminal and I'm just going to paste in this command but explain it really quickly, but we're using the Lamastack client to register a new tool group with the provider ID of model context protocol and pointing to that endpoint that we just checked out, which is that internal port 3001 endpoint as the MCP weather tool. And so just like that, we're making a request to register that that tool exists, and then we can start using it in our applications just like that. I'm gonna double check that it's there by doing a llama stack client tool groups, and then list the available MCP servers. So I've got 
two built in for rag and web searches, and also two for working with the file system and weather that I've imported as custom MCP servers. So let's test out this functionality by going to the testweather.py file that I have here. First off, we're going to be using the Llamastack client and connecting to that local server that's running. And we're going to make sure that we're using the Olama model here. So Olama and providing that specific one. And the next step is just telling the model that, hey, it has tools. It can use them to answer the question. And the next step is using that Llamastack client to work with the agent again, just like what we did before. But now you'll notice we're working with the Llamastack client, the specific model, the instruction and the prompt that we have here, but we're using that MCP tool that we registered using the Llamastack client. So just like that, we're going to go ahead and run that cell. You can see there was a post and a get request to that tool group. Now let's ask the question, hey, what's the weather in Seattle? And again, in order to have saved history in the context of the messages with our LLM, we'll use that create session function. And let's go ahead and try it out by sending that prompt to the LLM. So in Seattle, where this is the latitude and longitude, we're actually using that tool and we're making the request to the API that's documented with that MCP server. And we've got the response back. The current weather in Seattle is partly cloudy and it's quite hot. So that's a quick demonstration of how to use model context protocol with LlamaStack to build generative AI applications that have agentic functionality. That was awesome. You learned how to build AI agents in your application using the open source LlamaStack project from Meta. You learned how to build agents for searching the web, but also pulling the weather using MCP agents. And now you're ready for the next step, which is safety, monitoring, and evaluations of your AI application. I hope to see you in the next episode and please feel free to like the video if you learned something today. That's all for now. I'll see you in the next one.